Part one of the Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at AntipodeanWriter.wordpress.com. The Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay. Part one Horatius, a lay made about the year of the city, 360. Lars Porcina of Clusium, by the nine gods he swore, that the great house of Tarquin should suffer wrong no more. By the nine gods he swore it, and named a trysting day, and bade his messengers ride forth, east and west and south and north, to summon his array. East and west and south and north the messengers ride fast, and tower and town and cottage have heard the trumpet's blast. Shame on the false Etruscan who lingers in his home when poor Cena of Clusium is on the march for Rome. The horsemen and the footmen are pouring in a main from many a stately market place, from many a fruitful plain, from many a lonely hamlet which hid by beech and pine, like an eagle's nest hangs on the crest of purple Apennine. From lordly Volaterre, where scowls the far famed old piled by the hands of giants for godlike kings of old from seagird populonia whose senators descry sardinia's snowy mountain tops fringing the southern sky from the proud mart of pisa queen of the western waves where ride massilia's triremes heavy with fair-haired slaves from where sweet clanus wanders through corn and vines and flowers from where Cotona lifts to heaven the diadem of towers. Tall are the oaks whose acorns drop in dark horses rill. Fat are the stags that champ the boughs of the Ciminian hill. Beyond all streams, Clitumnus is to the herdsman dear. Best of all pools the fowler loves the great Volsinian mere. But now no stroke of woodman is heard by horses rill. No hunter tracks the stag's green path up the Ciminian hill. Unwatched along Clitumnus grazes the milk-white steer. Unharmed the waterfowl may dip in the Volsinian mere. The harvests of Aretium, this year old men shall reap. This year young boys in Umbro shall plunge the struggling sheep. And in the vats of Luna, this year the must shall foam round the white feet of laughing girls whose sires have marched to rome there be thirty chosen prophets the wisest of the land who alway by lars porcina both morn and evening stand evening and morn the thirty have turned the verses o'er traced from the right on linen white by mighty seers of yore and with one voice the thirty have their glad answer given Go forth, go forth, Lars Bessina, go forth, beloved of heaven. Go and return in glory to Clusium's royal dome, and hang round Nursia's altars the golden shields of Rome. And now hath every city sent up her tale of men. The foot are fourscore thousand, the horse are thousands ten. Before the gates of Sutrium is met the great array. A proud man was Lars Bessina upon the trysting day. For all the Etruscan armies were ranged beneath his eye, and many a banished Roman, and many a stout ally, and with a mighty following to join the muster came the Tusculan Mamilius, prince of the Latian name. But by the yellow Tiber was tumult and affright from all the spacious campaign to Rome men took their flight a mile around the city, a throng stopped up the ways. A fearful sight it was to see through two long nights and days. For aged folk on crutches, and women great with child, and mothers sobbing over babes that clung to them and smiled, and sick men born in litters high on the necks of slaves, and troops of sunburned husbandmen with reaping hooks and staves, and droves of mules and asses laden with skins of wine and endless flocks of goats and sheep and endless herds of kine and endless trains of wagons 
that creaked beneath the weight of corn sacks and of household goods choked every roaring gate now from the rock to Paean, could the wan burghers spy the line of blazing villages red in the midnight sky the fathers of the city they sat all night and day for every hour some horsemen came with tidings of dismay to eastward and to westward have spread the tuscan bands nor house nor fence nor dovecote in crustumerium stands for Bainer down to ostia hath wasted all the plain astur hath stormed janiculum and the stout guards are slain i wis in all the senate there was no heart so bold but sore it ached and fast it beat when that ill news was told forthwith up rose the consul up rose the fathers all in haste they girded up their gowns and hied them to the wall they held a council standing before the river gate short time was there ye well may guess for musing or debate out spake the council roundly the bridge must straight go down for since janiculum is lost nought else can save the town just then a scout came flying all wild with haste and fear to arms to arms sir consul lars Pessina is here on the low hills to westward the consul fixed his eye and saw the swarthy storm of dust rise fast along the sky and nearer fast and nearer doth the red whirlwind come and louder still and still more loud from underneath that rolling cloud is heard the trumpet's war note proud the trampling and the hum and plainly and more plainly now through the gloom appears far to the left and far to right in broken gleams of dark blue light the long array of helmets bright the long array of spears and plainly and more plainly above that glimmering line now might ye see the banners of twelve fair cities shine but the banner of proud clusium was highest of them all the terror of the umbrian the terror of the gaul and plainly and more plainly now might the burghers know by port and vest by horse and crest each warlike lucumo there clinius of aretium on his fleet rome was seen and astur of the fourfold shield girt with the brand none else may wield tolumnius with the belt of gold and dark verbena from the hold by reedy Thrasymene. fast by the royal standard overlooking all the war lars Porcina of clusium sat in his ivory car by the right wheel rode mamilius prince of the latian name and by the left false sextus that wrought the deed of shame but when the face of sextus was seen among the foes a yell that rent the firmament from all the town uprose on the housetops was no woman but spat towards him and hissed no child but screamed out curses and shook its little fist but the council's brow was sad and the consul's speech was low and darkly looked he at the wall and darkly at the foe their van will be upon us before the bridge goes down and if they once may win the bridge what hope to save the town then out spake brave horatius the captain of the gate to every man upon this earth death cometh soon or late and how can man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his fathers and the temples of his gods and for the tender mother who dandled him to rest and for the wife who nurses his baby at her breast and for the holy maidens who feed the eternal flame to save them from false sextus that wrought the deed of shame hew down the bridge sir consul with all the speed ye may i with two more to help me will hold the foe in play in yon straight path a thousand may well be stopped by three now who will stand on either hand and keep the bridge with me then out spake spurius Lartius, a ramnian proud was he lo i will stand at thy right hand and keep the bridge with thee and out spake strong herminius of titian blood was he i will abide on thy left side and keep the bridge with thee 
Horatius, quoth the council, as thou sayest, so let it be. And straight against that great array forth went the dauntless three. For Romans in Rome's quarrel spared neither land nor gold, nor son nor wife, nor limb nor life in the brave days of old. Then none was for a party, then all were for the state, then the great man helped the poor, and the poor man loved the great. Then lands were fairly portioned, then spoils were fairly sold. The Romans were like brothers in the brave days of old. Now Roman is to Roman more hateful than a foe, and the tribunes beard the high, and the fathers grind the low. As we wax hot in faction, in battle we wax cold, wherefore men fight not as they fought in the brave days of old. Now while the three were tightening their harness on their backs, the consul was the foremost man to take in hand an axe, and fathers mixed with commons seized hatchet, bar, and crow, and smote upon the planks above, and loosed the props below. Meanwhile the Tuscan army, right glorious to behold, came flashing back the noonday light, rank behind rank like surges bright of a broad sea of gold. Four hundred trumpets sounded, a peal of warlike glee, as that great host with measured tread, and spears advanced, and ensigns spread, rolled slowly towards the bridge's head, where stood the dauntless three. The three stood calm and silent, and looked upon the foes, and a great shout of laughter from all the vanguard rose, and forth three chiefs came spurring before that deep array. To earth they sprang, their swords they drew, and lifted high their shields and flew to win the narrow way. Ornus from green Typhernum, lord of the hill of vines, and Sayus, whose eight hundred slaves sicken in Ilva's mines, and Picus, long to Clusium, vassal in peace and war, who led to fight his Umbrian powers from that grey crag where girt with towers the fortress of Nequinum lowers over the pale waves of Nar. Stout Lartius hurled down Ornus into the stream beneath. Herminius struck at Sayus and clove him to the teeth. At Picus brave Horatius darted one fiery thrust, and the proud Umbrian's gilded arms clashed in the bloody dust. Then Ocnus of Falerii rushed on the Roman three, and Lausulus of Ergo, the rover of the sea, and Aruns of Volsinium, who slew the great wild boar, the great wild boar that had his den amidst the reeds of Cossa's fen, and wasted fields and slaughtered men along Albinia's shore. Herminius smote down Aruns, Lartius laid Ocnus low, Right to the heart of Lausulus, Horatius sent a blow. Lie there, he cried, fell pirate, no more aghast and pale. From Ostia's walls the crowd shall mark the track of thy destroying bark. No more Campania's hinds shall fly to woods and caverns when they spy thy thrice accursed sail. But now no sound of laughter was heard among the foes, a wild and wrathful clamour. From all the vanguard rose, six spears lengths from the entrance, halted that deep array, and for a space no man came forth to win the narrow way. But hark, the cry is Aster, and lo, the ranks divide, and the great lord of Luna comes with his stately stride. Upon his ample shoulders clangs loud the fourfold shield, and in his hand he shakes the brand which none but he can wield. He smiled on those bold Romans, a smile serene and high. He eyed the flinching Tuscans, and scorn was in his eye. Quoth he, the she-wolf's litter stand savagely at bay, but will ye dare to follow if Astur clears the way? Then whirling up his broadsword with both hands to the height, he rushed against Horatius and smote with all his might. With shield and blade Horatius, Right deftly turned the blow. The blow, though turned, came yet too nigh. It missed his helm that gashed his thigh. The Tuscans raised a joyful cry to see the red blood flow. He reeled, and on Herminius he leaned one breathing space. 
then like a wild cat mad with wounds sprang right at astur's face through teeth and skull and helmet so fierce a thrust he sped the good sword stood a handbreadth out behind the tuscan's head and the great lord of luna fell at that deadly stroke as falls on mount alvernus a thunder smitten oak far over the crashing forest the giant arms lie spread and the pale augurs muttering low gaze on the blasted head on astur's throat horatius right firmly pressed his heel and thrice and four times tugged amain ere he wrenched out the steel and see he cried the welcome fair guests that waits you here what noble lucumo comes next to taste our roman cheer but at his haughty challenge a sullen murmur ran mingled of wrath and shame and dread along that glittering van there lacked not men of prowess nor men of lordly race for all utreria's noblest were round the fatal place but all utreria's noblest felt their hearts sink to see on the earth the bloody corpses in the path the dauntless three and from the ghastly entrance where those bold romans stood all shrank like boys who unaware ranging the woods to start a hare come to the mouth of the dark lair where growling low a fierce old bear lies amidst bones and blood was none who would be foremost to lead such dire attack but those behind cried forward and those before cried back and backward now and forward wavers the deep array and on the tossing sea of steel to and fro the standards reel and the victorious trumpet peal dies fitfully away yet one man for one moment strode out before the crowd well known was he to all the three and they gave him greeting loud now welcome welcome sextus now welcome to thy home why dost thou stay and turn away here lies the road to rome thrice looked he at the city thrice looked he at the dead and thrice came on in fury and thrice turned back in dread and white with fear and hatred scowled at the narrow way where wallowing in a pool of blood the bravest tuscans lay but meanwhile axe and lever have manfully been plied and now the bridge hangs tottering above the boiling tide come back come back horatius loud cried the fathers all back Lartius, back herminius back ere the ruin fall back darted spurious Lartius, herminius darted back and as they passed beneath their feet they felt the timbers crack but when they turned their faces and on the farther shore saw brave horatius stand alone they would have crossed once more but with a crash like thunder fell every loosened beam and like a dam the mighty wreck lay right athwart the stream and a long shout of triumph rose from the walls of rome as to the highest turret tops was splashed the yellow foam and like a horse unbroken when first he feels the rein the furious river struggled hard and tossed his tawny mane and burst the curb and bounded rejoicing to be free and whirling down in fierce career battlement and plank and pier rushed headlong to the sea alone stood brave horatius but constant still in mind thrice thirty thousand foes before and the broad flood behind down with him cried false sextus with a smile on his pale face now yield thee cried lars Persina. now yield thee to our grace round turned he as not dining those craven ranks to see nought spake he to lars Persina, to sextus nought spake he but he saw on palatinus the white porch of his home and he spake to the noble river that rolls by the towers of rome o tiber father tiber to whom the romans pray a roman's life a roman's arms take thou in charge this day so he spake and speaking sheathed the good sword by his side and with his harness on his back plunged headlong in the tide no sound of joy or sorrow was heard from either bank but friends and foes in dumb surprise with parted lips and straining eyes stood gazing where he sank and when above the surges they saw his crest appear all rome sent forth a rapturous cry 
and even the ranks of tuscany could scarce forbear to cheer but fiercely ran the current swollen high by months of rain and fast his blood was flowing and he was sore in pain and heavy with his armour and spent with changing blows and oft they thought him sinking but still again he rose never i ween did swimmer in such an evil case struggle through such a raging flood safe to the landing place but his limbs were borne up bravely by the brave heart within and our good father tiber bear bravely up his chin curse on him quoth false sextus will not the villain drown but for this stay ere close of day we should have sacked the town heaven help him quoth lars Bessina, and bring him safe to shore for such a gallant feat of arms was never seen before and now he feels the bottom and on dry earth he stands now round him throng the fathers to press his gory hands and now with shouts and clapping and noise of weeping loud he enters through the river gate borne by the joyous crowd they gave him of the cornland that was of public right as much as two strong oxen could plough from morn till night and they made a molten image and set it up on high and there it stands unto this day to witness if i lie it stands in the comitium plain for all folk to see horatius in his harness halting upon one knee and underneath is written in letters all of gold how valiantly he kept the bridge in the brave days of old and still his name sounds stirring unto the men of rome as the trumpet blast that cries to them to charge the volscian home and wives still pray to juno for boys with hearts as bold as his who kept the bridge so well in the brave days of old and in the nights of winter when the cold north winds blow and the long howling of the wolves is heard amidst the snow when round the lonely cottage roars loud the tempest's din and the good logs of algidus roar louder yet within when the oldest cask is opened and the largest lamp is lit when the chestnuts glow in the embers and the kid turns on the spit when young and old in circle around the firebrands close when the girls are weaving baskets and the lads are shaping bows when the good man mends his armour and trims his helmet's plume when the good wife's shuttle merrily goes flashing through the loom with weeping and with laughter still is the story told how well horatius kept the bridge in the brave days of old End of part one. Recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Part two of The Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com the lays of ancient rome by thomas babington macaulay part two the battle of the lake regillus a lay sung at the feast of castor and pollux on the ides of quintilus in the year of the city four hundred and fifty one o trumpets sound a war note o lictors clear the way the knights will ride in all their pride along the streets to-day to-day the doors and windows are hung with garlands all from castor in the forum to mars without the wall each knight is robed in purple with olive each is crowned a gallant war-horse under each pours haughtily the ground while flows the yellow river while stands the sacred hill the proud ides of quintilus shall have such honour still gay are the martian calends december's nones are grey but the proud ides when the squadron rides shall be rome's whitest day unto the great twin brethren we keep this solemn feast swift swift the great twin brethren came spurring from the east they came over wild parthenius tossing in waves of pine 
Over Cira's dome, over Adria's foam, over purple Apennine, from where with flutes and dances their ancient mansion rings in lordly Lacedaemon, the city of two kings, to where by Lake Regillus, under the Porcian height, all in the lands of Tusculum was fought the glorious fight. Now on the place of slaughter a cots and sheepfolds seen, and rows of vines and fields of wheat and apple orchards green. The swine crush the big acorns that fall from cornice oaks upon the turf by the fair font the reaper's pottage smokes the fisher baits his angle the hunter twangs his bow little they think on those strong limbs that moulder deep below little they think how sternly that day the trumpets pealed how in the slippery swamp of blood warrior and war-horse reeled how wolves came with fierce gallop and crows on eager wings to tear the flesh of captains and peck the eyes of kings how thick the dead lay scattered under the porcian height how through the gates of tusculum raved the wild stream of flight and how the lake regillus bubbled with crimson foam what time the thirty cities came forth to war with rome but roman when thou standest upon that holy ground look thou with heed on the dark rock that girds the dark lake round so shalt thou see a hoof mark stamped deep into the flint it was no hoof of mortal steed that made so strange a dint there to the great twin brethren vow thou thou vials and pray that they in tempest and in fight will keep thy head all way since last the great twin brethren of mortal eyes were seen have years gone by an hundred and fourscore and thirteen that summer our virginius was consul first in place the second was stout aulus of the post humian race the herald of the latines from gabii came in state the herald of the latines passed through rome's eastern gate the herald of the latines did in our forum stand and there he did his office a sceptre in his hand here senators and people of the good town of rome the thirty cities charge you to bring the tarquins home and if ye still be stubborn to work the tarquins wrong the thirty cities warn you look that your walls be strong then spake the council aulus he spake a bitter jest once the jays sent a message unto the eagle's nest now yield thou up thine eyrie unto the carrion kite or come forth valiantly and face the jays in deadly fight forth looked in wrath the eagle and carrion kite and jay soon as they saw his beak and claw fled screaming far away the herald of the latines hath hied him back in state the fathers of the city are met in high debate then spake the elder consul an ancient man and wise now hearken conscript fathers to that which i advise in seasons of great peril tis good that one bear sway then choose we a dictator whom all men shall obey camerium knows how deeply the sword of aulus bites and all our city calls him the man of seventy fights then let him be dictator for six months and no more and have a master of the knights and axes twenty-four so aulus was dictator the man of seventy fights he made a beauteous elva his master of the knights on the third morn thereafter at dawning of the day did aulus and a beauteous set forth with their array sempronius atratinus was left in charge at home with boys and with grey-headed men to keep the walls of rome hard by the lake regillus our camp was pitched at night eastward a mile the latines lay under the porcian height for over hill and valley their mighty host was spread and with their thousand watch-fires the midnight sky was red up rose the golden morning over the porcian height the proud ides of quintilus marked evermore with white not without secret trouble 
our bravest saw the foes for girt by threescore thousand spears the thirty standards rose from every warlike city that boasts the latium name foredoomed to dogs and vultures that gallant army came from setia's purple vineyards from norba's ancient wall from the white streets of tusculum the proudest town of all from where the witch's fortress overhangs the dark blue seas from the still glassy lake that sleeps beneath aricia's trees those trees in whose dim shadow the ghastly priest doth reign the priest who slew the slayer and shall himself be slain from the drear banks of euphens where flights of marsh fowl play and buffaloes lie wallowing through the hot summer's day from the gigantic watch-towers no work of earthly men whence cora's sentinels overlook the never-ending fen from the laurentian jungle the wild hog's reedy home from the green steppes whence anio leaps in floods of snow-white foam aricia cora norba elytre with the might of setia and of tusculum were marshalled on the right their leader was mamilius prince of the latian name upon his head a helmet of red gold shone like flame high on a gallant charger of dark grey hue he rode over his gilded armour a vest of purple flowed woven in the land of sunrise by syria's dark-browed daughters and by the sails of carthage brought far over the southern waters lavinium and laurentum had on their left the post with all the banners of the marsh and banners of the coast their leader was false sextus that wrought the deed of shame with restless pace and haggard face to his last field he came men said he saw strange visions which none beside might see and that strange sounds were in his ears which none might hear but he a woman fair and stately but pale as are the dead oft through the watches of the night sate spinning by his bed and as she plied the distaff in a sweet voice and low she sang of great old houses and fights fought long ago so spun she and so sang she until the east was grey then pointed to her bleeding breast and shrieked and fled away but in the centre thickest were ranged the shields of foes and from the centre loudest the cry of battle rose there tiber marched and pedum beneath proud tarquin's rule and ferentinum of the rock and gabii of the pool there rode the volscian suckers there in a dark stern ring the roman exiles gathered close around the ancient king though white as mount seracti when winter nights are long his beard flowed down over mail and belt his heart and hand were strong under his hoary eyebrows still flashed forth quenchless rage and if the lance shook in his grip twas more with hate than age close at his side was titus on an apple steed titus the youngest tarquin too good for such a breed now on each side the leaders gave signal for the charge and on each side the footman strode on with lance and targe and on each side the horsemen struck their spurs deep in gore and front to front the armies met with a mighty roar and under that great battle the earth with blood was red and like the pontine fog at morn the dust hung overhead and louder still and louder rose from the darkened field the braying of the war horns the clang of sword and shield the rush of squadrons sweeping like whirlwinds over the plain the shouting of the slayers and screeching of the slain false sextus rode out foremost his look was high and bold his corslet was of bison's hide plated with steel and gold as glares the famished eagle from the digentian rock on a choice lamb that bounds alone before bandusia's flock herminius glared on sextus and came with eagle speed herminius on black ooster brave champion on brave steed in his right hand the broadsword 
that kept the bridge so well and on his helm the crown he won when proud fidine fell woe to the maid whose lover shall cross his path to-day false sextus saw and trembled and turned and fled away as turns as flies the woodman in the calabrian brake when through the reeds gleams the round eye of that fell speckled snake so turned so fled false sextus and hid him in the rear behind the dark lavinian ranks bristling with crest and spear but far to the north abutius the master of the knights gave tubero of norba to feed the porcian kites next under those red horse hoofs flaccus of setia lay better had he been pruning among his elms that day mamilius saw the slaughter and tossed his golden crest and towards the master of the knights through the thick battle pressed abutius smote mamilius so fiercely on the shield that the great lord of tusculum well nigh rolled on the field mamilius smote abutius with a good aim and true just where the neck and shoulder join and pierced him through and through and brave abutius elva fell swooning to the ground but a thick wall of bucklers encompassed him around his clients from the battle bare him some little space and filled a helm from the dark lake and bathed his brow and face and when at last he opened his swimming eyes to light men say the earliest word he spake was friends how goes the fight but meanwhile in the centre great deeds of arms were wrought there aulus the dictator and there valerius fought aulus with his good broadsword a bloody passage cleared to where amidst the thickest foes he saw the long white beard flat lighted that good broadsword upon proud tarquin's head he dropped the lance he dropped the reins he fell as fall the dead down all his springs to slay him with eyes like coals of fire but faster titus hath sprung down and hath bestrode his sire latian captains roman knights fast down to earth they spring and hand to hand they fight on foot around the ancient king first titus gave tall Caso a death wound in the face tall Caso was the bravest man of the brave fabian race aulus slew rex of gabii the priest of juno's shrine valerius smote down julius of rome's great julian line julius who left his mansion high on the velian hill and through all turns of weal and woe followed proud tarquin still now right across proud tarquin a corpse was julius laid and titus groaned with rage and grief and at valerius made valerius struck at titus and lopped off half his crest but titus stabbed valerius a span deep in the breast like a mast snapped by the tempest valerius reeled and fell ah woe is me for the good house that loves the people well then shouted loud the latines and with one rush they bore the struggling romans backward three lances length and more and up they took proud tarquin and laid him on a shield and four strong yeomen bare him still senseless from the field but fiercer grew the fighting around valerius dead for titus dragged him by the foot and aulus by the head on latines on quoth titus see how the rebels fly romans stand firm quoth aulus and win this fight or die they must not give valerius to raven and to kite for i valerius loathed the wrong and i upheld the right and for your wives and babies in the front rank he fell now play the man for the good house that loves the people well then tenfold round the body the roar of battle rose like the roar of a burning forest when a strong north wind blows now backward and now forward rocked furiously the fray till none could see valerius and none wist where he lay the shivered arms and ensigns were heaped there in a mound and corpses stiff and dying men that writhed and gnawed the ground and wounded horses kicking and snorting purple foam 
right well did such a couch befit a consular of rome but north looked the dictator north looked he long and hard and spake to caius cossus the captain of his guard caius of all the romans thou hast the keenest sight say what through yonder storm of dust comes from the latian right then answered caius cossus i see an evil sight the banner of proud tusculum comes from the latian right i see the plumed horsemen and far before the rest i see the dark grey charger i see the purple vest i see the golden helmet that shines far off like flame so ever rides mamilius prince of the latian name now hearken caius cossus spring on thy horse's back ride as the wolves of apennine were all upon thy track haste to our southward battle and never draw thy rein until thou find herminius and bid him come amain so aulus spake and turned him again to that fierce strife and caius cossus mounted and rode for death and life loud clanged beneath his horse hoofs the helmets of the dead and many a curdling pool of blood splashed him from heel to head so came he far to southward where fought the roman host against the banners of the marsh and banners of the coast like corn before the sickle the stout lavinians fell beneath the edge of the true sword that kept the bridge so well herminius aulus greets thee he bids thee come with speed to help our central battle for sore is there our need there wars the youngest tarquin and there the crest of flame the tusculan mamilius prince of the latian name valerius hath fallen fighting in front of our array and aulus of the seventy fields alone upholds the day herminius beat his bosom but never a word he spake he clapped his hand on ulster's mane he gave the reins a shake away away went ulster like an arrow from the bow black ulster was the fleetest steed from orthodus to po right glad were all the romans who in that hour of dread against great odds bear up the war around valerius dead when from the south the cheering rose with a mighty swell herminius comes herminius who kept the bridge so well mamilius spied herminius and dashed across the way herminius i have sought thee through many a bloody day one of us too herminius shall never more go home i will lay on for tusculum and lay thou on for rome all round them paused the battle while met in mortal fray the roman and the tusculan the horses black and grey herminius smote mamilius through breastplate and through breast and fast flowed out the purple blood over the purple vest mamilius smote herminius through headpiece and through head and side by side those chiefs of pride together fell down dead down fell they dead together in a great lake of gore and still stood all who saw them fall while men might count a score fast fast with heels wild spurning the dark grey charger fled he burst through ranks of fighting men he sprang over heaps of dead his bridle far out streaming his flanks all blood and foam he sought the southern mountains the mountains of his home the pass was steep and rugged the wolves they howled and whined but he ran like a whirlwind up the pass and he left the wolves behind through many a startled hamlet thundered his flying feet he rushed through the gate of tusculum he rushed up the long white street he rushed by tower and temple and paused not from his race till he stood before his master's door in the stately market place and straightway round him gathered a pale and trembling crowd and when they knew him cries of rage break forth and wailing loud and women rent their tresses for their great prince's fall and old men girt on their old swords and went to man the wall but like a graven image black oster kept his place and ever wistfully he looked into his master's face the raven mane that daily with pats and fond caresses the young herminia washed and combed and twined in even tresses 
and decked with coloured ribbands from her own gay attire hung sadly over her father's corpse in carnage and in mire forth with a shout sprang titus and seized black ooster's rein then aulus swore a fearful oath and ran at him amain the furies of thy brother with me and mine abide if one of your accursed house upon black ulster ride as on an alpine watch-tower from heaven comes down the flame full on the neck of titus the blade of aulus came and out the red blood spouted in a wide arch and tall as spouts a fountain in the court of some rich campuans all the knees of all the latines were loosened with dismay when dead on dead herminius the bravest tarquin lay and aulus the dictator stroked auster's raven mane with heed he looked unto the girths with heed unto the rein now bear me well black holster into yon thick array and thou and i will have revenge for thy good lord to-day so spake he and was buckling tighter black holster's band when he was aware of a princely pair that rode at his right hand so like they were no mortal might one from other know white as snow their armour was their steeds were white as snow never on earthly anvil did such rare armour gleam and never did such gallant steeds drink of an earthly stream and all who saw them trembled and pale grew every cheek and aulus the dictator scarce gathered voice to speak say by what name men call you what city is your home and wherefore ride ye in such guise before the ranks of rome by many names men call us in many lands we dwell well samothracia knows us cyrene knows us well our house in grey tarentum is hung each morn with flowers high over the masts of syracuse our marble portal towers but by the proud eurotus is our dear native home and for the right we come to fight before the ranks of rome so answered those strange horsemen and each couched low his spear and forthwith all the ranks of rome were bold and of good cheer and on the thirty armies came wonder and affright and ardia wavered on the left and cora on the right rome to the charge cried aulus the foe begins to yield charge for the hearth of vesta charge for the golden shield let no man stop to plunder but slay and slay and slay the gods who live for ever are on our side to-day then the fierce trumpet flourish from earth to heaven arose the kites know well the long stern swell that bids the romans close then the good sword of aulus was lifted up to slay then like a crag down apennine rushed Ulster through the fray but under those strange horsemen still thicker lay the slain and after those strange horses black Ulster toiled in vain behind them rome's long battle came rolling on the foe ensigns dancing wild above blades all in a line below so comes the po in flood time upon the celtic plain so comes the squall blacker than night upon the adrian main now by our sire quirinus it was a goodly sight to see the thirty standards swept down the tide of flight so flies the spray of adria when on the black squall doth blow so corn sheaves in the flood time spin down the whirling po while sextus to the mountains turned first his horse's head and fast fled ferentinum and fast lanuvium fled the horsemen of nomentum spurred hard out of the fray the footmen of the litre threw shield and spear away and underfoot was trampled amidst the mud and gore the banner of proud tusculum that never stooped before and down went flavius faustus who led his stately ranks from where the apple blossoms wave on anio's echoing banks and tullus of arpinum chief of the volscian aids and metius with the long fair curls the love of anxos maids and the white head of volso the great arician seer and nepos of laurentum the hunter of the deer and in the back false sextus felt the good roman steel 
and wriggling in the dust he died like a worm beneath the wheel and flyers and pursuers were mingled in a mass and far away the battle went roaring through the pass sempronius atratinus sate in the eastern gate beside him were three fathers each in his chair of state fabius whose nine stout grandsons that day were in the field and manlius eldest of the twelve who keep the golden shield and sergius the high pontiff for wisdom far renowned in all utrerius colleges was no such pontiff found and all around the portal and high above the wall stood a great throng of people but sad and silent all young lads and stooping elders that might not bear the mail matrons with lips that quivered and maids with faces pale since the first gleam of daylight sempronius had not ceased to listen for the rushing of horse hoofs from the east the mist of eve was rising the sun was hastening down when he was aware of a princely pair fast pricking towards the town so like they were man never saw twins so like before red with gore their armour was their steeds were red with gore hail to the great asylum hail to the hilltops seven hail to the fire that burns for eye and the shield that fell from heaven this day by lake regillus under the porcian height all in the lands of tusculum was fought a glorious fight to-morrow your dictator shall bring in triumph home the spoils of thirty cities to deck the shrines of rome then burst from that great concourse a shout that shook the towers and some ran north and some ran south crying the day is ours but on rode these strange horsemen with slow and lordly pace and none who saw their bearing durst ask their name or race on rode they to the forum while laurel boughs and flowers from housetops and from windows fell on their crests in showers when they drew nigh to vesta they vaulted down a main and washed their horses in the well that springs by vesta's fane and straight away they mounted and rode to vesta's door then like a blast away they passed and no man saw them more and all the people trembled and pale grew every cheek and sergius the high pontiff alone found voice to speak the gods who live for ever have fought for rome to-day these be the great twin brethren to whom the dorians pray back comes the chief in triumph who in the hour of fight hath seen the great twin brethren in harness on his right safe comes the ship to haven through billows and through gales if once the great twin brethren sit shining on the sails wherefore they washed their horses in vesta's holy well wherefore they rode to vesta's door i know but may not tell here hard by vesta's temple build we a stately dome unto the great twin brethren who fought so well for rome and when the months returning bring back this day of fight the proud ides of quintilus marked evermore with white unto the great twin brethren let all the people throng with chaplets and with offerings with music and with song and let the doors and windows be hung with garlands all and let the knights be summoned to mars without the wall thence let them ride in purple with joyous trumpet sound each mounted on his war-horse and each with olive crowned and pass in solemn order before the sacred dome where dwell the great twin brethren who fought so well for rome End of part two recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress dot com Part three of the Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com The Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay Part 3. Virginia 
fragments of a lay sung in the forum on the day whereon lucius sextus sextinus lateranus and caius lucinus clavistolo were elected tribunes of the commons the fifth time in the year of the city three hundred and eighty two ye good men of the commons with loving hearts and true who stand by the bold tribunes that still have stood by you come make a circle round me and mark my tale with care the tale of what rome once hath borne of what rome yet may bear this is no grecian fable of fountains running wine of maids with snaky tresses or sailors turned to swine here in this very forum under the noonday sun in sight of all the people the bloody deed was done old men still creep among us who saw that fearful day just seventy years and seven ago when the wicked ten bare sway of all the wicked ten still the names are held accursed and of all the wicked ten appius claudius was the worst he stalked among the forum like king tarquin in his pride twelve axes waited on him six marching on a side the townsmen shrank to right and left and eyed askance with fear his lowering brow his curling mouth which always seemed to sneer that brow of hate that mouth of scorn marks all the kindred still for never was there claudius yet but wished the commons ill nor lacks he fit attendance for close behind his heels with outstretched chin and crouching pace the client marcus steals his loins girt up to run with speed be the errand what it may and the smile flickering on his cheek for aught his lord may say such varlets pimp and jest for hire among the lying greeks such varlets still are paid to hoot when brave licinius speaks wherever ye shed the honey the buzzing flies will crowd wherever ye fling the carrion the raven's croak is loud wherever down tiber garbage floats the greedy pike ye see and wheresoever such lord is found such client still will be just then as through one cloudless chink in a black stormy sky shines out the dewy morning star a fair young girl came by with her small tablets in her hand and her satchel on her arm home she went bounding from the school nor dreamed of shame or harm and past those dreaded axes she innocently ran with bright frank brow that had not learned to blush at gaze of man and up the sacred street she turned and as she danced along she warbled gaily to herself lines of the good old song how for a sport the princes came spurring from the camp and found lucrece combing the fleece under the midnight lamp the maiden sang as sings the lark when up he darts his flight from his nest in the green april corn to meet the morning light and appius heard her sweet young voice and saw her sweet young face and loved her with the accursed love of his accursed race and all along the forum and up the sacred street his vulture eye pursued the trip of those small glancing feet over the alban mountains the light of morning broke from all the roofs of the seven hills curled the thin wreaths of smoke the city gates were opened the forum all alive with buyers and with sellers was humming like a hive blithely on brass and timber the craftsman's stroke was ringing and blithely over her panniers the market girl was singing and blithely young virginia came smiling from her home ah woe for young virginia the sweetest maid in rome with her small tablets in her hand and her satchel on her arm forth she went bounding to the school nor dreamed of shame or harm she crossed the forum shining with stalls in alleys gay and just had reached the very spot whereon i stand this day when up the varlet marcus came not such as when erewhile he crouched behind his patron's heels with the true client smile he came with lowering forehead swollen features and clenched fist and strode across virginia's path and caught her by the wrist hard strove the frighted maiden and screamed with look aghast 
and at her scream from right and left the folk came running fast the money changer crispus with his thin silver hairs and hanno from the stately booth glittering with punic wares and the strong smith urana grasping a half-forged brand and valero the flesher his cleaver in his hand all came in wrath and wonder for all knew that fair child and as she passed them twice a day all kissed their hands and smiled and the strong smith Urena gave marcus such a blow the caitiff reeled three paces back and let the maiden go yet glared he fiercely round him and growled in harsh fell tone she's mine and i will have her i seek but for mine own she is my slave born in my house and stolen away and sold the year of the sore sickness ere she was twelve hours old twas in the sad september the month of wile and fright two augurs were born forth that morn the consul died ere night i wait on appius claudius i waited on his sire let him who works the client wrong beware the patron's ire so spake the varlet marcus and dread and silence came on all the people at the sound of the great claudian name for then there was no tribune to speak the word of might which makes the rich man tremble and guards the poor man's right there was no brave licinius no honest sextius then but all the city in great fear obeyed the wicked ten yet ere the varlet marcus again might seize the maid who clung tight to marina's skirt and sobbed and shrieked for aid forth through the throng of gazers the young achilles pressed and stamped his foot and rent his gown and smote upon his breast and sprang upon that column by many a minstrel sung whereon three mouldering helmets three rusting swords are hung and beckoned to the people and in bold voice and clear poured thick and fast the burning words which tyrants quake to hear now by your children's cradles now by your father's graves be men to-day quirites or be for ever slaves for this did servius give us laws for this did lucrece bleed for this was the great vengeance wrought on tarquin's evil seed for this did those false sons make red the axes of their sire for this did scavola's right hand hiss in the tuscan fire shall the vile fox earth all the race that stormed the lion's den shall we who could not brook one lord crouch to the wicked ten o oh, for that ancient spirit which curbed the senate's will o oh, for the tents which in old time whitened the sacred hill in those brave days our fathers stood firmly side by side they faced the marcian fury they tamed the fabian pride they drove the fiercest quinctius an outcast forth from rome they sent the haughtiest claudius with shivered faces home but what their care bequeathed us our madness flung away all the ripe fruit of threescore years was blighted in a day exult ye proud patricians the hard-fought fight is over we strove for honours twas in vain for freedom tis no more no crier to the polling summons the eager throng no tribune breathes the word of might that guards the weak from wrong our very hearts that were so high sink down beneath your will riches and lands and power and state ye have them keep them still still keep the holy fillets still keep the purple gown the axes and the curile chair the car and laurel crown still presses for your cohorts and when the fight is done still fill your garners from the soil which our good swords have won still like a spreading ulcer which leechcraft may not cure let your foul usance eat away the substance of the poor still let your haggard debtors bear all their fathers bore still let your dens of torment be noisome as of yore no fire when tiber freezes no air in dog-star heat and store of rods for freeborn backs and holes for freeborn feet heap heavier still the fetters bar closer still the great patient as sheep we yield us up unto your cruel hate but by the shades beneath us and by the gods above 
add not unto your cruel hate your yet more cruel love have ye not graceful ladies whose spotless lineage springs from consuls and high pontiffs and ancient alban kings ladies who dine not on our paths to set their tender feet who from their cars look down with scorn upon the wandering street who in corinthian mirrors their own proud smiles behold and breathe of capuan odours and shine with spanish gold then leave the poor plebeian his single tie to life the sweet sweet love of daughter of sister and of wife the gentle speech the balm for all that his vexed soul endures the kiss in which he half forgets even such a yoke as yours still let the maiden's beauty swell the father's breast with pride still let the bridegroom's arms enfold an unpolluted bride spare us the inexpiable wrong the unutterable shame that turns the coward's heart to steal the sluggard's blood to flame lest when our latest hope is fled ye taste of our despair and learn by proof in some wild hour how much the wretched dare straightway virginius led the maid a little space aside to where the reeking shambles stood piled up with horn and hide close to yon low dark archway where in a crimson flood leaps down to the great sewer the gurgling stream of blood hard by a flesher on a block had laid his whittle down virginius caught the whittle up and hid it in his gown and then his eyes grew very dim and his throat began to swell and in a hoarse changed voice he spake farewell sweet child farewell oh how i loved my darling though stern i sometimes be to thee thou knowest i was not so who could be so to thee and how my darling loved me how glad she was to hear my footstep on the threshold when i came back last year and how she danced with pleasure to see my civic crown and took my sword and hung it up and brought me forth my gown now all these things are over yes all thy pretty ways thy needlework thy prattle thy snatches of old lays and none will grieve when i go forth or smile when i return or watch beside the old man's bed or weep upon his urn the house that was the happiest within the roman walls the house that envied not the wealth of capua's marble halls now for the brightness of thy smile must have eternal gloom and for the music of thy voice the silence of the tomb the time is come see how he points his eager hand this way see how his eyes gloat on thy grief like a kite's upon the prey with all his wit he little deems that spurned betrayed bereft thy father hath in his despair one fearful refuge left he little deems that in this hand i clutch what still can save thy gentle youth from taunts and blows the portion of the slave yea and from nameless evil that passeth taunt and blow foul outrage which thou knowest not which thou shalt never know then clasp me round the neck once more and give me one more kiss and now mine own dear little girl there is no way but this with that he lifted high the steel and smote her in the side and in her blood she sank to earth and with one sob she died then for a little moment all people held their breath and through the crowded forum was stillness as of death and in another moment break forth from one and all a cry as if the volscians were coming over the wall some with averted faces shrieking fled home amain some ran to call a leech and some ran to lift the slain some felt her lips and little wrist if life might there be found and some tore up their garments fast and strove to staunch the wound in vain they ran and felt and staunched for never truer blow that good right arm had dealt in fight against a volscian foe when appius claudius saw that deed he shuddered and sank down and hid his face some little space with the corner of his gown till with white lips and bloodshot eyes virginius tottered nigh and stood before the judgment seat and held the knife on high o dwellers in the nether gloom avengers of the slain by this dear blood i cry to you do right between us twain 
and even as appius claudius hath dealt by me and mine deal you by appius claudius and all the claudian line so spake the slayer of his child and turned and went his way but first he cast one haggard glance to where the body lay and writhed and groaned a fearful groan and then with steadfast feet strode right across the market-place unto the sacred street then up sprang appius claudius stop him alive or dead ten thousand pounds of copper to the man who brings his head he looked upon his clients but none would work his will he looked upon his lictors but they trembled and stood still and as virginius through the press his way in silence cleft ever the mighty multitude fell back to right and left and he hath passed in safety unto his woeful home and there taken horse to tell the camp what deeds are done in rome by this the flood of people was swollen from every side and streets and porches round were filled with that overflowing tide and close around the body gathered a little train of them that were the nearest and dearest to the slain they brought a bier and hung it with many a cypress crown and gently they uplifted her and gently laid her down the face of appius claudius wore the claudian scowl and sneer and in the claudian note he cried what doth this rabble here have they no crafts to mind at home that hitherward they stray ho lictors clear the market-place and fetch the corpse away voice of grief and fury till then had not been loud but a deep sullen murmur wandered among the crowd like the moaning noise that goes before the whirlwind on the deep or the growl of a fierce watch-dog but half aroused from sleep but when the lictors at that word tall yeomen all and strong each with his axe and sheep twigs went down into the throng those old men say who saw that day of sorrow and of sin that in the roman forum was never such a din the wailing hooting cursing the howls of grief and hate were heard beyond the pincian hill beyond the latin gate but close around the body where stood the little train of them that were the nearest and dearest to the slain no cries were there but teeth set fast low whispers and black frowns and breaking up of benches and girding up of gowns twas well the lictors might not pierce to where the maiden lay else surely had they been all twelve torn limb from limb that day right glad they were to struggle back blood streaming from their heads with axes all in splinters and raiment all in shreds then appius claudius gnawed his lip and the blood left his cheek and thrice he beckoned with his hand and thrice he strove to speak and thrice the tossing forum set up a frightful yell see see thou dog what thou hast done and hide thy shame in hell thou that wouldst make our maidens slaves must first make slaves of men tribunes hurrah for tribunes down with the wicked ten and straightway thick as hailstones came whizzing through the air pebbles and bricks and pot sherds all round the curile chair and upon appius claudius great fear and trembling came for never was a claudius yet brave against aught but shame though the great houses love us not we own to do them right that the great houses all save one have borne them well in fight still caius of corelli with his triumphs and his wrongs his vengeance and his mercy live in our camp-fire songs beneath the yoke of furious oft have gaul and tuscan bowed and rome may bear the pride of him of whom herself is proud but evermore a claudius shrinks from a stricken field and changes colour like a maid at sight of sword and shield the claudian triumphs all were won within the city towers the claudian yoke was never pressed on any necks but ours a cossus like a wild cat springs ever at the face a fabius rushes like a boar against the shouting chase but the vile claudian litter raging with currish spite still gelps and snaps at those who run still runs from those who smite so now twas seen of appius when stones began to fly he shook and crouched and wrung his hands and smote upon his thigh kind clients honest lictors stand by me in this fray 
must i be torn to pieces home home the nearest way while yet he spake and looked around with a bewildered stare four sturdy lictors put their necks beneath the curile chair and fourscore clients on the left and fourscore on the right arrayed themselves with swords and staves and loins girt up for fight but though without or staff or sword so furious was the throng that scarce the train with might and main could bring their lord along twelve times the crowd made at him five times they seized his gown small chance was his to rise again if once they got him down and sharper came the pelting and evermore the yell tribunes we will have tribunes rose with a louder swell and the chair tossed as tosses a bark with tattered sail when raves the adriatic beneath an eastern gale when the calabrian sea marks are lost in clouds of spume and the great thunder cape has donned his veil of inky gloom one stone hit appius in the mouth and one beneath the ear and ere he reached mount palatine he swooned with pain and fear his cursed head that he was wont to hold so high with pride now like a drunken man's hung down and swayed from side to side and when his stout retainers had brought him to his door his face and neck were all one cake of filth and clotted gore as appius claudius was that day so may his grandson be god send rome one such other sight and send me there to see End of part three recorded by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com Part four of the Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com The Lays of Ancient Rome by Thomas Babington Macaulay, Part 4 The Prophecy of Capis A lay sung at the banquet in the capital on the day whereon Manius Curius Dentatus, a second time consul, triumphed over King Pyrrhus and the Tarentines in the year of the city 479. Now slain is King Amulius of the great Silvian line, who reigned in Alba Longa on the throne of Aventine. Slain is the pontiff Camillus, who spake the words of doom, the children to the Tiber, the mother to the tomb. In Alba's lake no fisher, his net today is flinging, on the dark rind of Alba's oaks today no axe is ringing, the yoke hangs over the manger the scythe lies in the hay through all the alban villages no work is done to-day and every alban burgher hath donned his whitest gown and every head in alba weareth a poplar crown and every alban doorpost with boughs and flowers is gay for to-day the dead are living the lost are found to-day they were doomed by a bloody king they were doomed by a lying priest they were cast on the raging flood they were tracked by the raging beast raging beast and raging flood alike have spared the prey and to-day the dead are living the lost are found to-day the troubled river knew them and smoothed his yellow foam and gently rocked the cradle that bore the fate of rome the ravening she-wolf knew them and licked them o'er and o'er and gave them of her own fierce milk rich with raw flesh and gore twenty winters twenty springs since then have rolled away and to-day the dead are living the lost are found to-day blithe it was to see the twins right goodly youths and tall marching from alba longer to their old grand sire's hall along their path fresh garlands are hung from tree to tree before them stride the pipers piping a note of glee on the right goes romulus with arms to the elbows red and in his hand a broadsword and on the blade a head a head in an iron helmet with horsehair hanging down a shaggy head a swarthy head fixed in a ghastly frown 
the head of king amulius of the great sylvian line who reigned in all the longer on the throne of aventine on the left side goes remus with wrists and fingers red and in his hand a boar spear and on the point a head a wrinkled head and aged with silver beard and hair and holy fillets round it such as the pontiffs wear the head of ancient camiers who spake the words of doom the children to the tiber the mother to the tomb two and two behind the twins their trusty comrades go four and forty valiant men with club and axe and bow on each side every hamlet pours forth its joyous crowd shouting lads and baying dogs and children laughing loud and old men weeping fondly as rear's boys go by and maids who shriek to see the heads yet shrieking press more nigh so they marched along the lake they marched by fold and stall by corn field and by vineyard unto the old man's hall in the hall gate sat capus capus the sightless seer from head to foot he trembled as romulus drew near and up stood stiff his thin white hair and his blind eyes flashed fire hail foster child of the wondrous nurse hail son of the wondrous sire but thou what dost thou here in the old man's peaceful hall what doth the eagle in the coop the bison in the stall our corn fills many a garner our vines clasp many a tree our flocks are white on many a hill but these are not for thee for thee no treasure ripens in the tartessian mine for thee no ship brings precious bales across the libyan brine thou shalt not drink from amber thou shalt not rest on down arabia shall not steep thy locks nor sit on tinge thy gown leave gold and myrrh and jewels rich table and soft bed to them who of man's cedar born whom woman's milk hath fed thou wast not made for lucre for pleasure nor for rest thou that art sprung from the war-god's loins and hast tugged at the she-wolf's breast from sunrise unto sunset all earth shall hear thy fame a glorious city thou shalt build and name it by thy name and there unquenched through ages like vesta's sacred fire shall live the spirit of thy nurse the spirit of thy sire the ox toils through the furrow obedient to the goad the patient ass up flinty paths plods with his weary load with wine and bound the spaniel his master's whistle hears and the sheep yields her patiently to the loud clashing shears but thy nurse will hear no master thy nurse will bear no load and woe to them that shear her and woe to them that goad when all the pack loud baying her bloody lair surrounds she dies in silence biting hard amidst the dying hounds pomona loves the orchard and liber loves the vine and pallas loves the straw-built shed warm with the breath of kine and venus loves the whispers of plighted youth and maid in april's ivory moonlight beneath the chestnut shade but thy father loves the clashing of broadsword and of shield he loves to drink the stream that reeks from the fresh battle field he smiles a smile more dreadful than his own dreadful frown when he sees the thick black cloud of smoke go up from the conquered town and such as is the war god the author of thy line and such as she who suckled thee even such be thou and thine leave to the soft campanian his baths and his perfumes leave to the sordid race of tyre their dying vats and looms leave to the sons of carthage the rudder and the oar leave to the greek his marble nymphs and scrolls of wordy lore thine roman is the pilum roman the sword is thine the even trench the bristling mound the legion's ordered line and thine the wheels of triumph which with their laurelled train move slowly up the shouting streets to jove's eternal fane beneath thy yoke the volscian shall veil his lofty brow soft capua's curled revellers before thy chairs shall bow the lucumos of arnus shall quake thy rods to see 
when the proud samnites heart of steel shall yield to only thee the gaul shall come against thee from the land of snow and night thou shalt give his fair-haired armies to the raven and the kite the greek shall come against thee the conqueror of the east beside him stalks to battle the huge earth-shaking beast the beast on whom the castle with all its guards doth stand the beast who hath between his eyes the serpent for a hand first march the bold eporites wedged close with shield and spear and the ranks of false tarentum are glittering in the rear the ranks of false tarentum like hunted sheep shall fly in vain the bold epirates shall round their standards die and apennines grey vultures shall have a noble feast on the fat and the eyes of the huge earth shaking beast hurrah for the good weapons that keep the war gods land hurrah for rome's stout pilum in a stout roman hand hurrah for rome's short broadsword that through the thick array of levelled spears and serried shields hews deep its gory way hurrah for the great triumph that stretches many a mile hurrah for the wan captives that pass in endless file ho bold epirates whither hath the red king taken flight ho dogs of false tarentum is not the gown washed white hurrah for the great triumph that stretches many a mile hurrah for the rich dye of tyre and the fine web of nile the helmets gay with plumage torn from the pheasants wings the belts set thick with starry gems that shone on indian kings the urns of massy silver the goblets rough with gold the many coloured tablets bright with loves and wars of old the stone that breathes and struggles the brass that seems to speak such cunning they who dwell on high have given unto the greek hurrah for manius curious the bravest son of rome thrice in utmost need sent forth thrice drawn in triumph home weave weave for manius curious the third embroidered gown make ready the third lofty car and twine the third green crown and yoke the steeds of rosier with necks like a bended bow and deck the bull Mavania's bull the bull as white as snow blessed and thrice blessed the roman who sees rome's brightest day who sees that long victorious pomp wind down the sacred way and through the bellowing forum and round the suppliant's grove up to the everlasting gates of capitolian jove then where over two bright havens the towers of corinth frown where the gigantic king of day on his own roads looks down where soft orentius murmurs beneath the laurel shades where nile reflects the endless length of dark red colonnades where in the still deep water sheltered from waves and blasts bristles the dusky forest of bursa's thousand masts where fur-clad hunters wander amidst the northern ice where through the sand of morning land the camel bears the spice where atlas flings his shadow far over the western foam shall be great fear on all who hear the mighty name of rome end of part four end of the lays of ancient rome by thomas babington macaulay recorded by nathan at antipodeanwriter.wordpress.com